know, if we start with cardiovascular disease, I mean, this is the leading cause of mortality in you know the U.S., Canada, around the world, and so you know to kick off the conversation here, you know, amongst the population, who is at most risk of cardiovascular disease? Well, it's certainly a disease that is more prevalent the older, you know, in the elderly or older population. So uh, anybody over the age of 50, um, anybody over the age of 80, it's very, it's very prevalent. So you're looking, say, in a country like the United States, um, about 500,000 deaths, say, from cardiovascular disease per year. Uh, and it's similar, kind of similar breakdown per population mm -hmm. in other industrialized uh, countries. Um, there's some breakdown uh, by uh, genetically or by ethnicity, you know, allowing for the fact that those are generalizations, mm -hmm. those are lumping people together, but there are, you know, there are ways in which that can be meaningful. So with heart disease, um, Hispanic and non-Hispanic whites tend to be a little higher than other uh, other groups as as so described mm -hmm. and then in uh, stroke uh, African Americans say in my, my context here mm -hmm. um, and Hispanics somewhat tend to be a little bit higher as well um, the thing I'd like to emphasize though is these are typically phenomena that are years in the making gotcha and and when we look at different populations if we if we explore this a little bit more and you know again clients listening in or practitioners listening in what are some of the risk factors if someone's you know in your office or you know in their doctor's office around increased risk for cardiovascular disease and some of the modifiable risk factors if we talk about those those are the really important things to zero in on and certainly LDL which the medical you know kind of allopathic or standard medical profession really banks on as their number one target for therapy, that is an exceedingly important factor uh, just because of the weight, the massive weight of uh, evidence linking uh, LDL levels with increased chances of cardiovascular disease. Uh, I have other things to say about that, but it is, it is truly a major risk factor. Um, but so is diabetes, and that is a very serious problem. The Centers for Disease Control predicts that by 2040, 2050, one in three U.S. adults will have diabetes. Wow. And that is, you know, incredible to think. We know that um, it's, it's oh, telephonic research, I, I think, or survey research, but about – a third of the U.S. population is obese if we take body mass index of 30, uh, which, you know, usually... General population, not a bad marker, right? Yeah, right. You know, there, there's people with high lean muscle mass and great strength that maybe have BMIs higher than the guidelines as such, but, you know, in the 30s, people usually have a problem. And, and that's, that is going to be the big one. High blood pressure... Smoking mm -hmm. still in 2020. Yeah, for sure. Smoking. Um, it's interesting because in the tables of um, or, or, or various you know uh, comparative charts about risk, obesity is still considered a minor risk factor, and that is you know interesting. That's scientifically interesting, and minor doesn't mean trivial. It just means it's not as tightly or consistently you know, correlated. Uh, with cardiovascular disease is something like smoking. Um, but it also, you know, points to the fact that there could be differences in people with BMIs of 30. Absolutely. Um, there could be behavioral differences. And so that has always struck me. Uh, it's not a, a reason to be obese. And we see people get, you know, um, their diet and their exercise or house in order or the morbidly obese go through bariatric surgery and, completely change their metabolism and then their heart disease risk and their diabetes risk plummets. So it's no, it's no trivial matter, but it's interesting that that one stands aside as maybe not as absolute. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's so interesting, isn't it? That 
as you mentioned, type two diabetes being such a strong predictor of, of risk and, and events. And you think that would dovetail as well with obesity, but there's some nuance there. And if maybe we circle back to that standard lipid panel that clients are getting when they go to the doctor and you mentioned LDL and like to jump in there in a minute, but let's even start with, you know, total cholesterol, because that was traditionally the marker that's used to assess cardiovascular disease risk. You know, we see that half of the patients who experience events actually have, you know, cholesterol levels that are consistent with the guidelines. So, you know, today is, is total cholesterol on its own, a reliable predictor of cardiovascular disease? Uh, on its own, I think it's unreliable. Um, I think it's, it's like that strange noise that your car makes, right? It could nice. be something that <laughs> could be anything. isn't going to cost you a thousand. It could be anything, you know, um, hopefully you've got an honest mechanic. Exactly. <laughs> but the, uh, but some, but sometimes it is, so it's unwise to ignore. And that's how I see LDL these days that it's, it's unwise to ignore it. And, it's a fascinating area because it seems like the very high LDL levels in people with strong family history and then one or two other risk factors uh, is a harbinger, is, you know, is, is indicating, yeah, in 10 years or 15 years, they're going to have heart disease. But when we get out of that upper strata of risk, when we get out of the the sicker patients or the patients with more, you know, factors weighing them down health wise, LDL becomes much more fluid type of projection. And you know, if you ask any cardiologist about that, and you know, they're looking at doing the, you know, in a utilitarian fashion, doing the the maximum good, mm -hmm. they're going to say, hey, just take the statin and pound that LDL down. It's the LDL stupid. Yeah, that kind yeah of thing. for sure. And, it, but it's it's not that simple a story. So it's worth heeding, but by itself, it uh, really fails. As you say, you know, a lot of people with guidelines have within guidelines can still have heart attacks, and um, it it falls short in terms of predicting things. I, I believe by itself. 